Good morning. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Novato. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. We know it's no accident that you're here, that God has brought you here in some way, shape, and form. And so we, we celebrate your presence with us today. Today, as we go into worship, we begin looking at how we are becoming something new in Jesus Christ. Because God's never done with us. God is always at work in our life, loving us, caring for us, equipping us to love others and to be a beacon of hope out in the world. We're so glad you're here and we can't wait to worship God with you this morning. Let us worship God. As we worship God this morning, let us pray. God, light of the world, we gather today illuminated by your presence. Shine your grace into our hearts, cast hope into our lives. Reveal to us again and again who you truly are and let our lives become mirrors of your love. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you open the eyes of my heart lord Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of the glory, pour out your power and love as we sing. Shining in the light of your 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hi, everybody. A few years ago, we went on vacation in Palm Springs, and we took an Indian tour through the canyons in the mountain area. In fact, it was a night sky tour. So we did some hiking, and then when night came, we had apps on our devices, and we could follow the night sky where we were. It was so cool. And at the end of the tour, our Indian guide gave us each really special Indian names from our experiences together. And we used those names the whole rest of the trip. My boys were so excited about those names that they sort of became those names. They were their new identity. And whenever I think of identity, I think of all the different hats that we wear. So you guys are brothers or sisters, you might be best friends, you might be soccer players, dancers, performers, singers. You're also nieces or nephews, your grandsons or granddaughters, right? There's many different roles, many different identities that we have. That reminds me of some other people who have secret identities, like Peter Parker. What's his secret identity? Yeah, Spider-Man. What about Bruce Wayne? Batman. Okay, those were easy. Let's flip the switch. Who is Wonder Woman? What's her secret identity? Uh-huh, what's her last name? Yeah, Diana Prince. How about T'Challa? Who's that? Black Panther. Ah, oh, you guys are awesome. Today, Pastor Adam is going to talk to us about having a Christ-like identity. Well, Jesus kind of had a secret identity. He was the Son of God. He was the King of Kings. And if you were just hanging out and you saw him walk by, would you think that he was the King of Kings? Did he look like a king? No, that was kind of his secret identity which we all know, right? We have the Holy Spirit inside us, and with it come all the superpowers, loving unconditionally, even the unlovable, forgiving always, showing compassion. Pastor Adam is gonna to talk to us about being a beacon of hope to revive the world through God's love. This is the one identity our Christ-like identity that changes everything and can change the world. We can lead people to the only real hope out there, which is Jesus. And we do that by sharing our secret powers, by sharing our love, our forgiveness, and our compassion, by being an example, by being like Jesus by Christ-like identity. These are uncertain times. Be the certain thing in the lives of people around you. Let's pray. Dear God, we love that we know who Jesus really is. We love that our identity is in you, and you are in us, and we are becoming more and more Christ-like every day. Help us to build our relationship with Jesus and help us to help others do the same. Help us be the light and a beacon for others who are suffering without hope and without you. In your precious Son's name we pray, and all God's children say, Amen. See you later, guys. Therefore, be imitators of God 
as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. the world. Not you will be. Not you have to do this to become light of the world. Jesus flat out says, you're the light of the world. Surprise. You believe you're the light of the world? We're not who our egos tell us we are. We're not the false facade that we put on in our lives. We're more than that. Greater than that. Part of something greater. You know, when Jesus tells us we're the light of the world, what he's doing is he's taking the masks, the masks off the ones that we wear in our lives, the ones we try to put on so that we try to be somebody that we're not, and we all do it. We all do it, whether it's trying to hide fear or the brokenness in our lives or trying to be something because that's what the world tells us we should be. And what Jesus does when he makes this statement is he takes those masks off and he says, no, you are light of the world. You are salt of the earth. You are my children, children of God. Precious, valuable, important, beloved. And nothing can change that. Nothing in all of creation can take that away from you. This is who you are in Jesus Christ. So do you believe it? Do you believe that's who you are? Because part of me wants to say, yeah, that's me. I'm the light of the world. But uh, it's a small part of me, actually, I should say. I think the other part of me, and maybe you can relate to this, is hesitant to, cl- to uh, accept that identity. Hesitant to claim it as my own. Why? Because being the light of the world sounds hard. That sounds like a whole lot to do. And I'll tell you what, I don't even have my life put all together. How in the world can I be a light to other people? That's too much. How do we explain it? How else can we talk about the challenge of being light in the world that we might see? Well, let's, I got it, I got it. Let's take uh, Sally's illustration this morning. Sally, great job, great job. You, my friends, are superheroes. That's right. You are light of the world. In fact, I'm going to call you, your superhero name is uh, Captain Light. How about that? Hello, Captain Light. Good to see you. And Captain Light, now, you have certain powers. Powers as the light, right? You can shine. You can illuminate things. You have great and wonderful power. But here's the thing about superheroes that we know. Superheroes don't have it easy. In fact, superheroes have it hard, right? In fact, whenever there's a superhero, there's almost always a super villain, or at least one. There's always more than one, right? It seems like no matter how super something is, there's super challenges and obstacles that go along with it. Being a superhero is hard. And our identity in Christ, being light, that's hard too. But why? What, what are our challenges and why is it hard? Well, we have great obstacles, right? But here's the thing, and and we're going to gain wisdom today from the Spider-Man comic series. That's right. Hopefully you like Spider-Man. 
Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man. Spoiler alert. So if you didn't know that, you do now. Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man, was once told by his grandfather, with great power comes great responsibility. There is this relationship between power and responsibility. They are connected together. This is wisdom for us today, too. It's a truth that's important for us to see, especially as people, as Captain Light with great power. Because how we direct that power, how we use that power, how we claim that identity makes a difference. But we do have to understand that it is a challenge. It is a challenge to live into this identity, especially as Captain Light. Because here's why. What does light do? Light illuminates things, right? Light illuminates the world around us, but it also illuminates our own lives. It illuminates the darkness that's within us and around us. And that's a challenge. That's a challenge to be sure, because what if, what if our powers reveal that we are not living our lives the way our identity calls us to live? What if, what if claiming our identity as light means that we have to do hard things? We have to make hard choices in order to be Captain Light, using our powers of grace and love and forgiveness. Because these powers, they can change us. They can change the world, but they change us too. And we might just have to get up out of our comfortable places to be and live into this identity. And we don't like that. We don't like to move away from comfort into hardship. We don't like to change the status quo if things are going well for us now. We'd rather live in darkness than be in light, much less be a light for the world. Being light in the world means that we have the power to do great and wonderful things. But how we direct that light, how we live into it, how we use that power that we've been given becomes a profound challenge for us. And sometimes we don't even know where to start. How do we do it? How do we not only embrace this, but live in to this identity that Jesus says that we are? And I think that's the question that the Apostle Paul partly gets at in our passage from Ephesians. Paul's writing to this church of Gentiles in the Greek city of of Ephesus. So people that are trying to figure out their identity and trying to figure out how to live into it. And Paul wants to be general about it, to give the big theological claims, but also to get into the nuances of it, the practical side. And you know, I'm a practical guy too, and I know you are as well. It's great to be up here high and lofty, but you got to bring it down here into everyday life. And I think that's what Paul does. So what does Paul say to this church that's trying to figure out who they are as Captain Light? Paul says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. How can we be like God? Well, we have to look at Jesus. If we confess Jesus to be God, looking at the life, death, and ministry of Jesus Christ and resurrection, then we get a picture of who God is and what God does so that we too can be imitators of God. We have to be about Christ here, to be stewards of the great powers that we've been given, light powers, grace powers, love powers. But how do we do that? And Paul gives us more information about that. We don't see it in chapter 5. We have to go back to chapter 4. Notice that our passage this morning begins with the adverb, therefore. He's connecting what's happened right before to what he's talking about here as being imitators of God. The first thing he says, if we go back to early in chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 1, and that whole pericope there. First, we do it together. 
We don't do it by ourselves. We do it together. Because together, we're the light of the world. Together, we're the body of Christ. Not separate. We don't do it by ourselves. We're all in this together. And we're only the body of Christ together. So there's no if, and, and but about it. We are the church together. And all of our individual gifts, he says, have to be used together. Because if they're not used in concert with one another, then they may not be moving in the same direction. They may not be fulfilling the purposes that we've been given, living into our true identity. So we have to first and foremost realize that to imitate God, we have to do it together. We have to be about the life, we have to be about ministry together in order to be the church. Oneness, being together, is imitating God. In fact, if you boil it all down, God is all about bringing us together to be one. Even the big theological term we use, atonement, we say we've been atoned, really means being at one with God. The law was about bringing us together. Jesus, His life, His life, His death, His resurrection was about bringing us together with God. We're all about togetherness and oneness, and it's part of our identity as the body of Christ, as light of the world. The second aspect of being Christ-like, of imitating Christ, that Paul lifts up as Paul lists up all these words, telling us to give up the ways of, and here's Paul's words, hard-headedness, licentiousness, lust, greed. In a sense, what is he painting a picture of? If we put all those together, what, what's the common denominator here? In a sense, he's painting a picture of selfishness, of self-indulgence, of self-righteousness, of apathy, not caring about other people. It's about me. In a sense, Paul's talking about idolatry, but idolatry of self. Give up self-worship. That's not who you are. You're grasping after the wrong things. In verse 25, going on to the end of the chapter, Paul basically says, let me tell you what you need to do to imitate God. He says, speak truth to neighbors, because we are our brothers and sisters' keepers. Light reveals truth and doesn't hide in darkness. It reveals things, right? We talked about that. Speak truth in love. So truth is important. And what is truth, friends? Truth is Christ. Truth is Jesus. Speak Jesus with people. Speak the truth that we find in Christ. He then says, you'll be angry at times. Don't tell me you're never angry. I know you are. I'm angry all the time. I got three kids. I'm always angry. That's part of life. And he knows that. He says that here. He says, don't not be angry, right? He says, you're going to be angry at times, but don't let that anger consume you. Don't sin because of your anger. Don't let it consume you. And then he says, have an honest purpose in your daily work. He talks about, don't, don't be thieves, right? Don't steal stuff. Have an honest purpose in your daily work, but with a heart for others in need around you. With a heart for other people. Honest work loves your neighbor, in other words, which is very important. We can't leave that piece out of why we work. It's a part of our identity. And then Paul lifts up a big one this morning as a part of our way to imitate Christ. He says, basically, what you say matters. Because what Paul knows is words have power, and they could be a superpower for good, but they can also be a superpower for destruction. And we see that all the time. Unfortunately, we see that in our politics all the time. 
How words can destroy and tear down and bring down and make low. But words can also have the power to lift up, to bring together, to bring about hope for tomorrow. What you say matters, Paul says. Don't lie or deceive. Don't speak in anger. Don't gossip or separate. What we should say should build up, not tear down. Our words should give grace to those who hear them. And then in verse 31, Paul says, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander and together with all malice. And he says, Be kind to each other. Be tender-hearted, which is kind of a strange term, and very hard to translate, in fact. Forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Take all this together. By the end of chapter 4, what we see is that imitating God, being light in the world like Christ is light in the world, is not an easy feat. It's Pretty challenging, in fact, to use our light powers. It's being in relationship and working together. It's sacrificing for one another. It's loving one another so that we can be and build up the body of Christ. And this is important because for Paul, this is the ultimate purpose here, building up the body of Christ, connecting with neighbors, connecting with those within the church, and outside of the church, and being built up together, not just in numbers, growing the church that way, but growing in maturity of faith as well. Building up the body of Christ is what it's about here for Paul. It's a part of being light to the world, because light draws you in. Light makes you want to be a part of it, to share truth, to share true self. Because people want to know who they really are. We also see him say imitating God is being humble. It's looking out for the well-being of others. It's being patient. It's being kind. It's being empathetic. It's being selfless. It's knowing that what we say matters and should always build up and not tear down. Love rather than not care at all. It's forgiving one another as God has forgiven us. These, my friends, are our superpowers as Captain Light. That's right. These are our superpowers. This is how we live into our Christ-like identity, our true selves as light of the world. And maybe you're thinking, just maybe, I don't know about all that. That's too much. I can't take all that on right now. I don't think I even have it within me to make those kinds of changes in my life. Because that's an awful lot. And even Paul, as you're reading through this, makes it sound like an awful lot to the church there. But maybe it doesn't mean changing everything all at once in one's life. Maybe the first step is seeing who we are, understanding our identity as light of the world and our call to be Christ-like in all that we do. And it begins with one little thing at a time. You don't overhaul the whole system. That would be fantastic, by the way, if we could all make that overall transformation in our lives. Some people can do things like that, but I think for most of us, we got to take it slow. We take it one step at a time. Paul knows it's a journey of growth that we don't make it happen all at once, that we live into it. We mess up along the way, but we get better at it as we practice, as we support one another in the body of Christ, as we challenge one another. As we use our powers, we hone them. We get better at it. And they become more powerful 
in our lives and in the lives of others. And all of a sudden, as we become more powerful and we accept those new difficult responsibilities, all of a sudden we begin to shine more as Captain Light. We begin to shine further and people begin to notice us. And maybe then, maybe then our vision becomes a reality that we become that beacon of hope that's so bright that people can't help but notice and see how our Christ-like identity is changing everything around us, how God is changing everything around us through us. And the world becomes revived because of that love that has claimed us, that grace of Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, maybe we need to claim our identity as light, to live Christ-like lives, one little thing at a time. Because when that happens, oh, when that happens, we not only live into who we are, and it feels right, and we feel full and whole doing it, even in the midst of challenges. But people come from all over to see what's happening and what God is doing and has already done for them. That's the day, friends. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
as we continue in worship, let us go to God in prayer for one another and for the world. God of light, hear our prayers. Burst into our hearts and minds with your radiant mercy and grace. Let us see your divine love again and again. The love that leads us away from fear and selfishness and toward your grace. Let us become a beacon of hope for the world, listening and acting with the heart of Christ. For the world you've entrusted to our care, we pray you will free us from war, famine, disease, and the air, soil, and waters cleansed of our reckless pollution. We pray that those who govern and maintain peace in every land may exercise their powers in obedience to your loving commands. We pray that you will strengthen this nation to pursue justice and peace, to have compassion for the lowly, to seek reconciliation of the races, we pray that the young will be educated and the old cared for, the hungry filled and the homeless housed and the sick comforted and healed. We pray for victims of the pandemic and natural disasters sweeping across the world, for the caregivers and the emergency workers, we pray for our close neighbors that you will preserve all who live and work in Novato and the surrounding areas in peace and safety. And we pray for this congregation as we seek to embody the love of Jesus Christ in our life and ministry, both together and individually. As we continue prayer, Lord, we bring to you the prayers embedded in our hearts. Merciful God, you give us grace that helps us always and especially in times of need. There are many among us who grieve. God of compassion and sorrow, we receive from you the support you alone can give. Enable us to see that you are always working for our good. You are our dwelling place, O oh God, and underneath us all are your everlasting arms. Assure us of your love that we may be able to accept what we cannot understand. Be with the entire Mink family as they mourn the deaths of Phil, Barbara, and Sonia Mink, victims of the COVID pandemic. Assure us that not even death can separate us from your infinite mercy. For the Basquette family, Mary Jo Driosh, Mary Winslow, Brian Walker, the Eshoff family, Mike Douglas, Don McGinnis, Kathy Wright, and Jeannie Polland. For Anna Walters, niece of Becky Prawn on the loss of her pregnancy. Lord of peace be with them all in this time of grief. We lift up those who are in frail health or struggling with chronic illnesses. We pray for those who are facing surgery, Marilyn Bentley, Allison Coho, and Nicole Stewart, Les Church's daughter. For Melinda McKeever, who faces cancer surgery tomorrow. And for those who are recovering from surgery, Tony McMicken, who now awaits chemo treatments. Jane Bradfield, Bill Convis, Greg DeBose, friend of Ed and Connie Fisher, Roberta Dunham, Linda Isley, granddaughter of Diane Scott, Jay Wayne, Bill Jones, Lisa Lee, Dan Zochi, for all those recovering from health issues, Jim and Melody Baird, Elsa Borsheting, Shirley Witt, Diane Scott's son-in-law, Jerry, and mother Janet, Kristen Rush's sister-in-law, Jackie, 
Jennifer Prawn's co-worker, Miguel, Glenice's sister-in-law, Maybelle Rosenlund, who is in hospice care, Candy Bloomquist. For those who are caring for family and friends, Carrie Ford and Stan Wood's entire family. For Skylar, Mike and Carol Robinson's grandson who is in the hospital. Jesus, you are the great physician. May your healing hands touch both body and heart to restore those who are suffering. God, there is so much to pray for, and we are grateful that you know our needs better than we know ourselves. We pray the prayers that are unspoken and known only to you. For those of us and those we know who battle every day, help them to know you are with them and nothing is too great for them to overcome with your help. We pray for Mike Tartman's mom, Patricia John, as she prepares to move. Prayers and thank yous for the staff at Nazareth House as they prepare to close. Give us all the power of your Holy Spirit as we live into these times of uncertainty. And even as we come to you with prayers of burden and concern, so too do we come to you with prayers of praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for a successful, fun Halloween day at the church yesterday and for those who thought outside the box to make it happen. We pray for a safe election for those heading to the polls tomorrow and Tuesday. We praise you for Jeff Pinar and Juarez, his love and care for the orphans and families. Keep him safe as COVID rages through those communities. We praise you for all of our PCUSA missionaries as they strive to reach people in other nations with your word and your love during this recent spike in the pandemic. And we praise you for our staff, our committees, for session and the deacons. We give you the glory for all that we have been able to accomplish and all that you will have us do in the coming months. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to do distant and online ministry. Thank you for helping us reach those who are lonely, those who are feeling anxiety for those who are scared. Help us to help them see you, God, and know they are never alone, that you lift them up and you will protect them. We may not be sure of our future, but we are sure of you, so sure, God, and you hold our future. We are your church, and we thank you for all our amazing blessings. May we rise to the challenges we face, setting an example and being a beacon for others to see you. Oh God, receive all of these, our prayers. We know and trust God that you are always with us in cold and in warmth, in darkness and in light, in every season and every moment of our lives, you hold us all in your loving embrace and never let us go. Trusting indeed that you are always there, we pray to you now as your son taught us praying together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we go out into the world, be the light of the world. As hard and as challenging as that sounds, be the light of the world. It's who you are. Imitate Christ in your life. Do it together. Be selfless. Be humble. Be caring. Be compassionate. Forgive others. These are your superpowers. And don't worry, I won't call you Captain Light anymore. Terrible, terrible superhero name. I know, I know. But you're powerful. You're powerful in Jesus Christ. And these are, in fact, your superpowers. And through them, Christ is building up the church. Christ is bringing light to the world. Hope for tomorrow. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. that feels like home to the people I can't depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love I had at first oh I want to go 